I bet you've heard of Warren Buffett. As the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, a company he has built over time, Buffett has amassed a net worth of $115 billion. To put that into perspective, an average American earning $50,000 per year would have to work for 2.3 million years to earn that much money. That's impressive. But what's even more impressive are his frugal habits and brilliant financial mindset. The financial legend is widely respected for his ability to spot profitable opportunities, negotiate deals, and make an investment strategically. While there aren't many secrets left when it comes to accumulating wealth, Mr. Buffett's surprising habits have allowed him to amass so much money in such a short period. In this video, we'll look at 8 money habits that keep most people broke and poor, and how you can break free from them. If you want financial success in the long term, you need to save money, invest it, and have it work for you rather than against you. Financial success requires developing good money habits. These habits will be crucial for young people who are just starting their careers and have little money. Without these habits, not only will your bank account stay empty, but every time you look at it, you will be filled with stress, anxiety, and desperation. But remember, bad habits won't necessarily make you poor right away, but they will set you up for poverty in the future when retirement age creeps up on you and your savings account is virtually non-existent. So here are the 8 bad money habits that keep you broke and poor. Avoid them at all costs. Number 1. Not having a budget. If you're not careful, money can slip through your fingers without realizing it. This is especially true if you don't have a budget. Without a budget, it's easy to overspend on things you don't even need. For example, you may eat out more than you should or purchase unnecessary items simply because they are on sale. Don't fall victim to clever marketing tricks. Just because something is on sale doesn't mean you should buy it. Imagine you bought a new pair of shoes you don't need. They normally cost $100, but you found it on sale for only $50. The store wants you to think of the purchase as $50 saved, even though in reality, it's actually $50 wasted. Spending too much money without following a budget is a great way to go broke. If you want to stay on track to meet your retirement goals, you need to start tracking your spending and creating a budget. The next bad money habit is far too common in America. Before I share it, would you mind hitting that like button? It helps my channel in the YouTube algorithm and will allow me to keep making helpful videos just like this. Number 2. Lack of Emergency Savings It's no secret that one of the main reasons people are broke and poor is that they don't have any emergency savings. Why is having emergency savings so important? Because it gives you a buffer in case something goes wrong. Life is unpredictable, and things can go wrong at any time. If you don't have emergency savings, you're much more likely to end up in debt if something unexpected arises. There are two main reasons why people don't have emergency savings. The first is that they don't earn enough money. If your income is low, it can be challenging to save anything at all. The second reason is that people often spend everything they earn instead of putting some aside for a rainy day. To get out of the cycle of being broke and poor, you must start building up an emergency fund. Aim to save at least three to six months worth of living expenses so that you know you'll be able to cover yourself if something goes wrong. And if your income is too low to allow you to save anything, then you need to fix the next bad habit on this list. Number 3. No Passive Income The vast majority of Americans are broke because they rely on just one source of income. This usually comes in the form of a 9-to-5 job that pays per hour. When you're not working, you're not earning. According to Warren Buffett, this is the worst way to earn money. Buffett is famously quoted for saying the following, If you aren't making money while you sleep, you will work until the day you die. What does this mean? It means anyone who wants to retire needs to add a stream of passive income. This is when you set up an investment or a business that pays you continuously even when you aren't working. For example, if you have a million dollars to invest and you simply put it into the S&P 500 index fund, you can expect to make about 4% return per year after accounting for inflation. This comes from the famous 4% rule in investing. Your million dollar investment would generate $40,000 per year for you passively for the rest of your life, as long as you don't touch your principal investment. But there's a problem. You probably don't have a million dollars lying around in cash to invest. So what can you do? You can start by looking for a passive income side hustle that will allow you to make extra cash even when you're not working. Most people go through life using up a very 
very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is that's the best investment you can possibly make. And then I would, I would follow my passion. I mean, whatever turns you on. There are many passive income side hustles out there, but my favorite one is perfect for beginners who want to work from home and only have five to 10 hours of extra time per week. So what is this side hustle that I love so much? Click the link in the pinned comment to a free video that will explain everything. Number four, keeping up with the Joneses. Trying to keep up with your neighbors is a great way to spend more than you can afford. It would be best if you focused on your own financial goals and not what others have. If you're like most people, you're probably still trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know who I'm talking about. The family down the street with a new car, the big house, and the seemingly perfect life. They always seem to have money, and you can't help but wonder how they do it. The truth is, the Joneses are probably just like you. They're living paycheck to paycheck, and they're in debt up to their eyeballs. The only difference is their spending habits. They might even earn less than you. The grass is always greener on the other side. Instead of trying to compete with your neighbors, focus on your own financial goals. The Joneses won't come to rescue you during retirement, so why should you waste your money just to impress them? Start by saving money instead of spending it. Put away at least 10% of your income into savings and long-term investments so that you have a cushion to fall on when times are tough. Besides, your life is probably more comfortable than you think. I don't have any problem with that at all. I do not think that standard of living equates with cost of living beyond a certain point. Number five, making impulse purchases. We've all been there before. You see something you want and buy it without thinking twice. This is called an impulse purchase, and it's a really common money habit that can keep you broke and poor. Why? Because impulse purchases are made without any thought or planning, which means they're often unnecessary and can quickly add up. If you're constantly making impulse purchases, it's essential to take a step back and consider your spending habits. Impulsive spending is usually driven by emotions such as excitement, happiness, or anger. And while they may give you short-term gratification, they will only leave you broke and in debt in the long run. Here are some tips to avoid making impulse purchases. Make a list of what you need before going shopping. This will help you stay focused and avoid buying things you don't need. Use the budget you created after learning about habit number one in this video and stick to it. This will prevent you from overspending on unnecessary items. Avoid shopping when you're feeling emotional. If you're angry, sad, or stressed, you're more likely to make impulsive decisions that you'll regret later on. Take your time when making a purchase decision. If an item is on sale but you're not sure you need it, wait a day or two before buying it. Chances are you'll realize that you don't really need it after all. Number six, not diversifying. If your investments are not diversified, you're in for a world of hurt. This also applies to your other sources of income. Don't just rely on a single job to cover all your expenses for life. Even at prestigious companies, no matter how smart you are, you could lose your job at any time. More than 10,000 highly skilled Facebook employees learned that the hard way. Buffett described diversification as protection against ignorance. That's because diversification is key to mitigating risk and ensuring that your portfolio can weather any storm. By spreading your investments across different asset classes, industries, and geographical regions, you'll be able to offset any losses in one area with gains in another. Without diversification, you're essentially putting all your eggs in one basket. And that's a recipe for disaster. So if you want to stay afloat financially, make sure you diversify your holdings. I love investing in index funds such as the S&P 500, because they are stable and a reliable way to grow your wealth in the long term. But for the short term, adding another source of income such as a business or side hustle can make you recession proof. Number seven, lacking a financial plan. If you're like most Americans, you probably don't have a personal financial plan. In fact, according to Schwab's 2021 Modern Wealth Survey, less than one-third of American adults have a written financial plan. Without a financial plan, it's easy to make poor money decisions that can keep you broke and in debt forever. For example, you may be tempted to spend money impulsively on unnecessary purchases or make impulsive decisions about major life expenses. A lack of financial planning can also lead to problems like not having enough money saved for retirement or being unprepared for unexpected life events. If you want to get ahead financially, developing a written financial plan is crucial. 
Start by setting goals for yourself and your family, then create a budget and track your progress over time. If you're not sure how to get started, setting up a meeting with a licensed financial planner could be the best thing you ever do for your financial goals. Number 8. Paying Lots of Taxes Paying taxes is an important part of living in a developed and functional society. They help to fund the government and allow for the development and maintenance of national systems and infrastructure. However, chances are you are unhappy with the amount you pay in taxes. Some people may try to avoid paying taxes altogether, but this is usually not possible or legal. But that doesn't mean you can't legally reduce your tax burden. One strategy is to use a tax-advantaged account, such as a 401k or an IRA. Another strategy is to itemize your deductions. This can help you save money on your taxes by deducting things like mortgage interest, charitable contributions, and medical expenses. You can also take advantage of tax credits, which can reduce your tax bill by up to $1,000. Finally, you can try to negotiate a payment plan with the IRS if you cannot pay your taxes in full. In Canada, you can send this same request to the CRA. Gambling is the easiest way to run out of money because the chance of winning is always lower than the chance of losing. Warren Buffett says that it's okay to gamble once in a while for fun, but if you let it become a habit, you will go bankrupt. Remember, each time you roll the slot machine, you get a rush of excitement. This feeling will make you want to play over and over again, even if you keep losing. Avoid gambling as much as possible. It will destroy your finances. Successful people don't rely on dumb luck to get rich. They make their own luck. Always remember that. Number 2. Gym Membership Your health is very important, and a gym membership can be one of the best investments in yourself, but only if you actually use it. According to statistics from USA Today, 66% of gym memberships go unused. Gym owners know this, so they actually want people to sign up and then stop using the gym. This saves them money when fewer people show up and their profits go up. People join gyms to improve their mental and physical health. They want to build muscle, reduce fat, or just get their heart pumping. But lots of people join the gym for fun and don't actually commit to exercising regularly. Having a gym membership makes no sense if you don't use it. If you just want to hang out with your buddies, you can do that for free at a park or a running trail. It costs nothing and you can still get a great workout. Train your mind until you can commit to an exercise routine. And if you can't do that, save your money and cancel that useless gym membership. Number 3. Luxury Brands Poor people love to buy things they don't need at a price they can't afford, just to impress people who don't even care about them. Everyone knows that millionaires can afford luxury houses, cars, and watches. But that doesn't mean they go out and waste their money on these useless possessions. You'll see the rich wearing $50 watches and simple clothes, even though they can easily afford the $20,000 Rolex and the $150 yoga pants. Because they understand that the real value is in the quality of the product and how much it improves their life, not in a brand name. Poor people care about brands because they want to impress their friends. The rich focus on their career and their ability to solve problems. No car or watch is more impressive than a person who can solve hard problems for a lot of people. Remember that. Now speaking of cars, number 4. New Car Buying a new car is one of the worst decisions most young people make, because as soon as you drive the car off the lot, it loses a lot of its value. As a general rule, the value of your car will drop by 20 to 30 percent after just one year. In five years, it will lose at least 60% of its initial value. Most people borrow money to buy a car. Imagine borrowing money and paying interest for an asset that loses 30% of its value right away. You are getting poorer and poorer. But it's not all bad news. If you want a nice car that still smells new and fresh, you can buy one that is a few years old from a dealership and get at least a 30% discount. Invest the money you save. Number 5. TV and Video Games Warren Buffett revealed an important fact about middle and lower class families. They waste a lot of time and money watching TV and playing video games. This is much more common in these lower income households than in wealthier homes. Buffett explains that first, they waste time and money buying the latest streaming packages and video games. 
Then they waste their time playing video games instead of being productive and using that time to learn something or improve their life. For example, children from wealthier families spend much more time reading and learning about finance and investing compared to children from poor families, who waste time binging shows on Netflix and other streaming services. Number 6. Fancy Vacations Traveling can really open up your mind to new experiences and give you a lot of perspective on what life is like around the world. It can teach you skills and make you more confident. And eating new tasty dishes around the world is also fun. But none of this matters if you go on vacations that put you in debt. If you can't afford it, don't do it. You will come back from your luxury vacation buried under a mountain of credit card bills that you can't pay. You will end up regretting the vacation because you will have to pay for it for the rest of your life. Plan your vacations properly. Make a budget and don't go over it. It's amazing how much fun you can have on a low-cost vacation. Spending less money doesn't mean you will have less fun. Since you stuck around here, I want to give you a bonus tip from Warren Buffett. Bonus. Buying a house. I bet you weren't expecting this. Everyone is always telling you how amazing it is to be a homeowner. But the rich don't buy a house at the start of their journey. They invest in their education and in their business. They rent a small place to save money so they can stack their earnings and grow their wealth faster. Poor people love to dump all their savings and take loans to buy a house. But buying a house to live in is expensive. It will take money out of your pocket every month due to repairs, maintenance, property taxes, utilities, and other expenses. Buffett doesn't think buying a house to live in with your family is always bad. But he says it's bad to buy a house you can't afford because you will have to take on a lot of debt. And that can bankrupt you slowly if you're not careful. You learned some great ways to save money. But saving money won't make you rich if your earnings are low. You need to learn how to generate wealth like the rich. Watch my video on how to start an online business for less than $100.